Hi, welcome to TMC 310, Promotion of the Enterprise. I'll be your professor this semester, Dr. Cho. So, uh, have you ever seen me before? Well, I got a bunch of publications. Actually, I have more like 27 or 28. I also have a whole bunch of degrees, including a PhD and MBA. Uh, you're going to hear me refer to my alma mater, MIT, a lot, just because it influences a lot of how I think. And I'm actually an ordained minister. So if any of you want to get married, I work for sandwiches. Um, you can find my dissertation in a textbook. It's kind of a weird thing, flipping through a book and all of a sudden, wait a minute, I know this work. So that's something. Uh, probably what I'm most well known for is making the microgyroscope. And what the microgyroscope is, is a device that measures rotation of objects. And you have three of them in your phone. And this accounts for uh, why you can play video games and why your screen flips around. And it was a great enough achievement that even Steve Jobs talked about it. So yes, you have me to thank for being able to play games on your phone. I have a whole bunch of patents too, but the biggest skill you're probably most interested in is that I have 15 years experience in strategic marketing, as a, along with my technology experience. But what you're, uh, I've only been a professor for two years. I've been in industry for 30 years. And so is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, well, what I do have is a particular set of skills, skills that I've acquired over a very long career skills that will make you a nightmare for your competition. Oh, come on, that's taken. <laughs> anyway, uh, so to get to know Dr. Cho a little better, and some of you might become project managers or work with new teams. This is a technique. You play a game called uh, Two Truths and a Lie. So two of these things I'll tell you about Dr. Cho are true, and one is a lie, and you need to figure out what the lie is. So, number one is, during his doctoral qualifying exam, Dr. Cho was the only person to pass out of 10 students. And so when I was a doctoral student at Michigan, you have these oral exams, and this is the chance for the opportunity to get rid of you. Dr. Cho was checked out by the actress, Lucy Liu. And number three is, in a fight, Dr. Cho put a six foot seven inch, 260 pound man in the hospital. And was not hurt. So, which is the lie? And the lie is number one. During my doctoral qualifying exam, yes, I was the only person in my department to pass, but it was out of six people, not 10. Uh, Lucy Liu was a student at Michigan the same time Dr. Cho was. And so you got the open area on a campus called the quad, uh, Quadrangle. And so I was coming from one direction, she was coming from the other. And as I passed by her, I thought, wow, she's cute. And so I looked back and to checked her out. Then she stopped, turned around, and checked me out. And then she turned around and kept walking. <laughs> uh, so, what's the story behind this fight? Well, I'm from New Jersey. I'm a Jersey guy through and through. And the thing about New Jersey is physically you need to know how to handle yourself. And so I guess I said something derogatory about a guy's girlfriend. His name was Samson, and Samson was six foot seven. He had this long hair, big beard and mustache. He was 260 pounds, and he comes into this pizzeria where I'm eating with my friends, and he starts screaming at me how he's going to mess me up, uh, all because I said something inappropriate. Well, the thing is, I started calculating in my head, how am I going to handle this? And so the thing is, back in those days, they used to make hot pizza. I mean, the kind that burned the roof of your mouth. And so what happened is uh, the owner of the place who I knew, Sal, that's the thing about Jersey, a lot of businesses are family businesses, and you, you know the people. But he came out with a pizza, and so I grabbed it, and I threw it at him. Uh -huh. And the thing about pizza is pizza is actually a really good weapon. And the reason why is cheese sticks. Now the thing is, even before I threw that pizza, I had already played out the entire fight in my head, how it was gonna go. The millisecond after I threw the pizza, I grabbed a chair. Now is it because I wanted to hit him with a chair? Well, actually no, chairs are not good weapons. 
The reason why is the center of gravity of a chair is low. It's intended to be on the ground. It's actually not a good swinging weapon. No, the reason why I wanted the chair is he's six foot seven. I'm five foot nine. How the heck am I going to hit him <laughs> all the way up there? And so what I did is I came running at him with the chair, put it down, got up on the chair, and basically uh, nailed him <laughs> in the face. He went down. I grabbed him by the hair and literally pulled him out of the pizzeria just because uh, the owner, Sal, would have gotten upset if I had messed his place up. And then I took care of him and put him in the hospital. Now, what is the moral to this story? Why did I win? The reason why I won is I dictated the terms of the conflict. I picked where we were going to fight, how we were going to fight, and what the conditions were going to be. The thing is, I would have never fought him in an open area. Why? Because he has too clean a shot at me. The thing is, all the tables and chairs, I have maneuvering room. I have obstacles. Uh, I thought about, uh, there was no way I was going to fight him straight. Uh, he would have turned me into mashed potatoes. But this is the lesson of marketing. And this is why I love marketing. What marketing is about is you're trying to get your product out there. In order to get your product out there, you can't fight on other people's terms. You have to dictate the terms and how you're going to fight and make them fight against your strengths, against their weaknesses. And that's how you win. And so, this is my logo. Yes, I'm going to, this semester, I'm going to teach you how to compete and how to go out and win. So what this class is basically about is taking a product from the very beginning, taking it through its entire life cycle, getting that product on the beach, getting it to grow, and to make a lot of money. And so we'll be going over the techniques and processes to do that. Uh, the thing about uh, education is my big goal is when you walk out of a class you should be able to think like that person so if you take an economics class you should be able to walk away at the end and think like an economist I want to get you to think like marketers and so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to focus on concepts uh, no offense to anybody's major but uh, after having taught this class for four semesters, one thing I find is some of your majors don't really support this because you're really trying to think in a certain way. So I'll guide you through the process. Uh, in all honesty, in six weeks, I don't think we can get there. But at least you'll have an idea in it. And that's if you understand a concept, then you don't have to remember all the little details because all the details come out of the concept. From that, We'll go over problem solving, and essentially, how do you solve problems? Um, and finally, because I have the first two skills, I can go out and I can compete. Let's face it, was Bill Gates a great coder? No. But the one thing Bill Gates was great at is that man knew how to compete. And that's what separated him from everybody else. Uh, and most of all, when you do all of this, you use rigor. I'm going to ask you to be thorough and have good answers. So what does it mean when I have all these techniques and skills? What it means is this is going to form your toolbox. These are going to be the things that you can use in the future. This is your intellectual capital. And what happens is when you have a problem, no matter what you do, what it comes down to is that when you leave, you have to make decisions. And what your toolbox will be able to do is help you to make superior decisions because you'll have tools that other people won't. Most of all, I am not interested in your quote unquote education per se. What I'm interested in as an industry guy is I wanna teach you the skills that'll help you learn how to take care of yourself when you go out there. I mean, giving you a bunch of it, hey, facts that you can't use. I mean, what good does that do you? But if I teach you the things that people in the industry look at, things that you need to know and help you, then you can go take care of yourself. And that's the whole purpose of your education, at least in my eyes. 
in the next video, we'll go over the layout of how this course uh, uh, maps out.